for this session. And mm, looks like you started these problems. Yeah, and I'm just like really confused on whether I did them right or not. I asked my teacher about them, but anything he said like did not make sense at all. Okay, let me look at this first one here. Okay. Does it tell us anything about these two triangles other than the information that we're looking at on the page? No. Okay. And it wants you to calculate E. Okay, what happens if, let me draw on this thing. These are not similar triangles. Okay. So that's not, you don't want to use this point right here. That's not. Okay. Okay. If they were similar okay. triangles, then you could do that. The ratios of the corresponding sides are the same. Or congruent, okay. or congruent triangles. But I only see one angle that's the same, that one right there. Yeah. There's nothing else. So there's no way those two triangles are congruent or similar. Okay. However, there's a principle in geometry where if you start from a vertex and you draw a line that splits the angle, bisects the angle. Uh-huh then the other side is bisected. Okay. In other words, E needs to be 18. Now, that doesn't look right, does it? No. <laughs> so the question is, Am I right? Let me draw a really weird triangle. And if I bisect that angle, yeah, that side looks the same as that. If I bisect that angle, yeah, that side looks the same as that. So anytime, no matter what the triangle looks like, it bisects, if you bisect that angle, you bisect the opposite side. So even though they didn't draw it to scale, in other words, they drew it in a manner that's trying to fool you. Okay. So you just have to know that this is not congruent or similar triangles. And if it's not okay. congruent or similar triangles, then there's really only one thing it could be. And that is, is that because this line right here bisects that angle, then it bisects the side also that it's going to. No matter how I draw that, notice that even if I draw this side like that, so I'm still bisecting the angle, I go to the midpoint of the other side. So no matter how I draw a triangle, that's the case. Okay. Okay. Now, let's look at number seven. This arc here you drew? Well, that was in the... Oh, no. What does that mean? What does that arc right there mean? Is that, on, um, is that on the original problem? No, that's one that I drew. Sorry. Okay, that's okay. I just wanted to make sure because I wasn't quite sure what it was. Um, okay. So, you got a same, the same thing here, right? Yeah. None of these other distances matter. Just like the 10 didn't matter, the 24 didn't matter. Okay. The 15 doesn't matter, the 40 doesn't matter. What has to be true about F and G? Well, that's what I was wondering because they're like on the interior of them. So I didn't know if that switched things up or if it was just like the placement of the variable. Phil means that is equal to that. 
because we're okay. starting at this vertex and we're bisecting that angle. So when you have a an angle bisector, you bisect oh. the other side also. So what is F going to be? 33. No, that's the total distance from there to there. So it's got to be half that. So it's half of 33. 16 and a half? Yep. Okay. Now, I can tell by the stuff that you drew here that you were trying to treat these as congruent triangles or, or similar. Or obviously yeah. not congruent. One's bigger than the other. But they're mm -hmm. also not similar. In other words, to get similar triangles, you got to have all three angles be the same. Okay. Okay. And we've got one angle that's the same. But I certainly don't see another angle like that one in the other triangle. Definitely don't. That's close to a right angle. We don't have a close to a right angle over here. So they're not similar. And if they're not similar, there's really, you, you can't use this uh, pattern of solution that you're using. Okay. You just have to know that that line bisects the far side. So that that's the same as that. F is the same as G. F plus G equals 33. Therefore, each one is half of 33. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's scroll down. Number eight. <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you. <coughs> trying to figure out what it is I'm allergic to because I'm going crazy today. <laughs> And I think it might be those fires in California. Really? Well, they got to be putting up an awful lot of smoke into the air. And if that's yeah. towards Colorado, yeah, that'll do it. That'll make our, our air a little dirty. And it'll mm -hmm. really set off your allergies if there's a lot of smoke in the air. Hmm. So this asks for F and G. So they're both 16.5. <clears throat> okay, now let's go to the next one here. Let me scroll. Yeah, the bottom of this thing is cut off. Uh, you may have to read I know. It. It's cut off on mine, too. I don't know. All right. We might still be able to figure it out. Okay. So, let's, we came up with an M of 4.5. Okay. This is a case where we do have similar triangles. In other words, okay. let me take a snapshot of it. There's actually a couple of principles at play here. That triangle is similar to this triangle. Notice why. Those top two mm -hmm. triangles. I'm going to erase it so we can look at it. They're similar because that angle is the same as that angle, and that line is parallel to that line, and they're all parallel. Okay. So all of the triangles you see here are similar. So I could solve it that way. Or if I drew them separately, I could figure out ratios and figure out what M is. But there's an easier mm -hmm. way to do it. When you have this kind of a picture, then it turns out that the ratio that I'm interested in is 12 to 9, right? Okay. That ratio is going to apply throughout this whole triangle. In other words, 6 has got to be 4 thirds of M. 
and that gives an M of 4.5. So you're right there. And we're going to answer everything here based on these similarity proportions. Okay. So P, where is P? P must be, oh, P was this one over here. Oh, yeah, I can't see it, but I assume that what you've labeled as 16 is P? Where is yeah. it? Yeah. This is P right here? Um, N? That one's N. That one's N. Let me look. I'm pretty sure P is the one that's... Cut off. Hold on. Yeah, if you could fill in some missing things on this thing, then we can work with my drawing here. Okay, yeah. Okay, so it got cut off quite a bit. So, like, down from X, there's another one, like you've drawn, mm -hmm. and it's on the left side, 18. Okay. And then on the right side, it's P. Okay. And then, But there's one more down from that. Another one like this? Yeah. Okay. And on the left side, it's six. And on the right side, it's Q. Okay. And then I bet the bottom is Z. Uh, no, that's where it stops. Oh, where's Z? It doesn't have it at the bottom. Is there a Z anywhere? Because they ask about Z. They ask about Y. <laughs> I'm guessing Z is at the bottom, but on both my sheets that I have, there isn't a Z. Okay. All right. Well, we'll so answer we what we can see. We'll answer what we can okay. see. Okay. Let's do the easy ones first. We know that the relationship of the left side of these figures is always four-thirds times the right. Okay. So that means N has to be four-thirds times 12 which is 16, so that's correct. And P, what can I say, what kind of an equation can I write to figure out P and Q? Um, you can do four thirds. Of what? Times. Here's the way to look at it. If you want to read from left to right, okay. then four -thir 18 has mm -hmm. to be 4 thirds times P, which means P is 3 fourths times 18. You have a calculator? Yeah. I believe that that's going to be 13 and a half. Is it three fourths or four thirds? Well, let's back up. We start with the equation and then we solve the equation. Okay. I know the left side is always four thirds of the right side. Whether I'm looking at the top, 12 versus 9, 12 is 4 thirds of 9. Okay. Okay. So it's always the number on the left equals 4 thirds of the number on the right. So that's okay. what it says. And then to solve it, I got to multiply both sides by 3 and then divide both sides by 4, which is the same as 
multiplying both sides by 3 fourths. In other words, you can do it in one step. I'm going to multiply the left by 3 fourths, the right by 3 fourths. Both of those go away, and I get P equals 3 fourths of 18, which I believe is 13 and a half. Check that with your calculator. Okay. <clears throat> it's 4 and a half times 3. Yeah, it's 13 and a half. Yeah, it is. Okay. So, give me an equation to solve for Q. Um. Now, we can make it a little bit easier. We don't have to make the algebra so hard. <clears throat> okay. Let's start with the right side. What is it relative to the left? If the left is four-thirds of the right, then the right is three-fourths of the left. Three-fourths of the left. Okay, so I can say Q equals three-fourths times six. Which is a little bit easier, right? I'm, yeah. They're asking for Q, and I got Q already on its left side all by itself. So I don't have to do any algebra. I just got to figure out what that number is. Okay. That's four and a half. Yeah. Okay. And we actually could have done them all like that. In other words, if I back up a step and I say, well, if I want to solve it a little easier, I'll say P equals three-fourths of 18. Okay. Okay. And that is 13 and a half. So it's the same thing. It just kind of saves a step algebraically. Okay. Okay. So we have the top four. Now let's talk about W. Okay. Okay. Now, W, we can't assume that W is just uh, we don't know yet what the relationship between W and 8 is. Yeah. So, let's take this triangle. Hold on. Let's take this triangle and separate it. Let's draw it over here. Dimension that. 18 on that side. M was 4.5, so the right side's 13.5, right? Mm -hmm. Bottom side is W. That triangle is similar to the triangle at the top, this triangle right here. They're similar triangles, and we know all three dimensions on that one at the top. It's 12, 9, and 8. Okay. So now you use your similar triangles. In other words, this triangle is similar to this triangle, and the ratios of all the sides are the same. Notice that 12 is two-thirds of 18, and 9 is... Two-thirds of 13.5? Yeah. So, 8 okay. is two-thirds of W. Or... Let's do it the other way around so we save that step algebra. In other words, okay. here's what I can write. 18 is to 12. In other words, this side is to this side. As W is to 8. Notice that I'm always going big to little. You don't want to okay. go backwards and have one side be little to big. W mm -hmm. is definitely bigger than 8. And 18 is bigger than 12, so I got it correct. Now, to solve that equation, you don't really need to cross-multiply because what I'm solving for is in the numerator. So all i got to do is multiply both sides by 8. So when I multiply 8 by 1 and a half, I get 12.
You can do that in your calculator if you want, but that becomes a 2, that becomes a 3. I get 36 divided by 3. That's 12. So W is 12. Okay, and okay. you don't really have to draw these two separate triangles out, although I have kind of discovered that whenever you're dealing with geometry problems where they have triangles in triangles, like this situation mm -hmm. here, that it really does kind of help to draw them separately. In other words, okay. draw that top triangle all on its own and draw the bottom triangle all outside of one another so that I can look at it. I know there's okay. similar and I know the dimensions so all I got to do is compare the same sides with the same sides. And I have to use similar triangles to do this. There's no other um, it's the only way to do it. Now, let's take away my drawings because the relationship is the same on all of these similar triangles. In other words, every triangle that I'm looking at here is similar to every other one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With that being the first, that being the first one, that being the second one, that being the third one, that being the fourth one, you get me? Yeah. Okay. So, whoops, probably shouldn't have done that. Now we can figure out X. So, we know that this triangle right here is similar to that top one. Okay. So the relationships. Let's figure out the total side of that side. What is it? Of the left side? Uh-huh. Because we're trying to solve for X, we got to take that total left side. I've kind of covered up the answer, so let me erase this so we can see. Yeah, I had covered up 16. So what's the length of the left side from here to here? 34. Mm, okay. So 34 is to what? What's the corresponding side of the small triangle? What's its length? Nine. Don't go to the other oh. side. We're still on the left side. Okay, okay, okay. Twelve. It's not thirty-four is to twelve. That's what? Um as hold on. Trying to solve for X. As thirty-four point five. No. Is to nine? No. Remember, all the ratios are the same in these two triangles. Whatever I find for a ratio between two corresponding sides is the same ratio no matter which sides I'm looking at. So, so this, is this 34 over 12? No. That's the ratio of each side, which means X is to 8. In other words, this side is 34, this side is 12. So I'm comparing 34 is to 12. That's how much the, the scale factor is between these two triangles. If I draw these two mm -hmm. triangles out, there's one. Here's the other. Okay, this one is a 12, 9, 8. This one is a 34. That's all I need. That gives me the ratio, 34 to 12. So the ratio between X and 8 has to be that same ratio. In other words, X over 8 has to be equal to 34 over 12. 
none of the ratios change when you're dealing with similar triangles. Okay. So solve that. Again, that becomes, if I divide both sides by 4, that becomes 68 over 3. You could actually put that as an answer. I, I actually prefer this to a decimal. Does your teacher want decimals? Yeah. Well, what is that? 22.67? Yeah. That's the problem with decimals is you can't write it perfectly. You always have to yeah. turn it off. And I don't see any instructions as to how... How many decimal points to round it off to? So I would have been tempted to write 68 thirds. That's the exact answer. Okay. 22.67 is an approximate answer. That's why I prefer the ratios. Okay. Okay. So, and I think you can see that to figure out everything else that's not on our picture, you do the same thing. Yeah. In other words, the problem that everything on that problem is similar triangles. And it's mm -hmm. just finding the ratio of one similar triangle to another. If I have a triangle like this and I say, okay, now I have a similar triangle like that. Well, the first thing I want to know is what's the scale factor between big to little? Well, if that side's 2 and that side's 10, then I know it's 5 to 1. You with me? Yeah. Okay, so if that side's 10 and that side's 2 and this side's 5 and this side's X, what's X? One. Yeah. In other words, we need that scale factor. 5 has to be 5 times x. So x okay. has to be 1. And I would solve that mathematically by saying 10 is to 2 as 5 is to x. Or I could reverse it and say 2 is to 10 as x is to 5, which is a little easier to solve. Now so all I have to do is multiply mm -hmm. both sides by 5. I get x equal 1. Okay. So no matter what variable you're solving for, you've got to use that principle. Now, notice something else that we discover here when we're looking at similar triangles. I'll let you go here. I realize I'm a couple minutes over, but I want to point this out because it can be a little okay. it can be a little confusing. In other words, 10 is to 2, that's a ratio same side between two triangles, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's also true when you have similar triangles. Let's say this is 20. Okay. Well, I can say 10 is to 20 as 2 must be to 4. In other words, I can put these ratios either between the triangles or within the triangle. In other words, I can establish a ratio for the right side versus the left side. That's two to one. Mm -hmm. That still has to be the same on that triangle. The right side has to be twice the left side. Which gives you two ways to do it. And I want to point it out to you because I, it confuses a lot of students, the fact that you can do it two different ways. Just know yeah. that... Yeah. In other words, you can always compare, as long as we're talking similar triangles, you can always compare the one side to the other side as the same ratio as the left side to the right side on the top or on the one on the left. Okay. Okay? And with, mm -hmm. that, with that, I will let you go. All right. Anna, it was nice to talk to you again. You too. Thank you so much. For the last time or not. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Have a good evening. Talk to you later. You too. Thank you.